Philippians 4. Philippians chapter 4, we're going to read the same portion of Scripture we read this morning. Philippians 4, verse 10 through 13. It says this, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. This morning we talked about the aspect of anxiety and how to deal with anxiety. And we're going to look at the aspects of the lessons of life. He says that uh, I have learned. I've been instructed uh, both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And so the aspect of life is a series of lessons. Uh, as uh, one old Southern Baptist um, evangelist by the name of Vance Havner say, we are in the school of Christ. And so as we learn about Christ, then we have a chance to practice the things we learn. And so... We talked about this morning about we can do all things through Christ with strength. No matter what we're going through, we can do everything that we need to do. And yet, not just do what we need to do, but then also what lessons are we going to learn from those things of um, where it says um, about being abased and abounding, about uh, being full and hungry and abounding and to suffer need. And so first aspect about the lessons of life, they are learning the school of affliction. Look at Psalms 119, Psalm 119, verse 71. Psalms 119, verse 71. Verse 71 says this. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. Now, I don't know about you, but when I have problems, I don't say, God, I love what you just did to me. I've never, ever one time ever said, God, I just love the fact that I had all these problems. But so, the psalmist says, it's good for me that I've been afflicted, that I may learn thy statutes. An old evangelist used to say, there, there, in the world today, you have people that listen and learn, some have to live and learn, and some plain just don't learn. And that's basically the three categories of society today is that uh, it's a whole lot better if we listen and learn than have to go through it and learn the lessons. But then we don't want to be part of the ignorant group where it doesn't matter what happens. We just don't learn what God's trying to teach us. And so these lessons of life are learned in the school of affliction. And why is it that we have to learn through affliction? Because we have a tendency to be more responsive when things are negative compared to positive. Um, in the sports realm, that um, the teams that are the most successful with long-term are the ones that have had to deal with affliction, they've had to deal with adversity, they've had to deal with problems, they've learned how to adapt and to adjust. Um, that's the aspect about the sports realm. In the Christian realm is that if things are going great, we have a tendency to kind of just drop our, our guard down and just let the wind just blow us down, down uh, life and not think about it. But if we're understanding problems, our senses are, are heightened to be able to look around and observe and learn. And so we learn through the school of affliction, but then also it is practiced every day. Look at uh, Isaiah chapter 1, Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. Look at verse 16 and 17 says this. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes, cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. 
It is practiced every day. Redundancy, the aspect of having a just repetition. The repetition is a key of knowledge. Now, I started driving a my I got a, a regular route two weeks ago, and um, and so I have a route sheet, and so I started following that route sheet, and the kids are saying, "There's no one here." Well, I know there's no one here. No, there's no one hasn't been here. Okay, well, I'll make a check on that. And so it took me about three days to realize and going back and researching and talking to uh, those who are in the bus barn, okay, well, we didn't know that. No one told us that no one was there at that bus stop. And so then I got all the different bus stops arranged. Then I went back and did a time, uh, uh, basically revising the time because when you started at 640, and you go all the way out to Lee Hurt Road and you come back into Pittsburgh and you're supposed to not start picking up till 10 after 7. I'm thinking, how in the world am I supposed to do all this? It's just too much time. And so I just started running it like I did. Now I've got the kids trained. I'm running about at the very beginning of it when I come back to Pittsburgh about six minutes earlier. Now I got them trained. And so now when I went back to the bus barn, had everything revised, stuff like that, got all the, I cleaned it all up. And then now I don't need that route sheet anymore just because of the redundancy of going and stopping and going and stopping and going and no one there. I realized that I now know my route. Now it's a matter of my, and now what I like to do is I like to beat the times. <laughs> it's just the comp competitive part of me is I want to beat the times. And just because I like to drop off kids, it's a lot better on the bus. There's no kids on the bus. It's so much quieter, so much more relaxing. And so you always want to get through as quickly as possible. And But the fact is this, is that if I ever change things up, you talk about just throwing everything out of whack, just repetition. Sometimes outside of driving a bus, sometimes repetition drives me nuts. I like new. I like I like. Uh, just revising of things. But when you're on a set schedule, then it helps just to keep doing the thing over and over and over and over again for the purpose of uh, just giving yourself comfort, but also it gives the kids comfort. I mean, when I started riding, riding, arriving there 10 minutes early, I had one of the parents said, what are you doing? What do you mean I'm, I'm driving the bus? Well, we're not expecting you this. I said, why are you at the bus stop this early if you're not expecting me? Well, we didn't know. Okay, well, I'm just going to tell you this. I learned this 19 years ago. Those times are not for you, but that's for me. You have five, you're supposed to be at the bus stop five minutes before that. And I have a five minutes, a five minute window afterwards, just in case I have problems. So when I say I'm going to be at this bus stop at 7.04, that's for me. You're supposed to be there at 6.59. Well, we're here. At, well, there you go. You're already trained. I don't have to worry about you. And so you've got to train yourself. But sometimes you've got to train other people that you're involved with. Now, I've got parents that are saying, man, we like you. Why? Because you're either on time or you're a little bit early. Especially since it's been cold, we like to get inside where it's warm. Well, of course, no one likes to stand outside the cold. But the fact is this, is that we're going to learn in the school of affliction, but it's got to be practiced every day. But also, we also have a great teacher. Look at Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Look at verse 29. We have a great teacher. We have a teacher that practices it and models it before he, before he expects us to do it. He says in verse 28, says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. How do you get rest? Take my yoke upon you, and here it is, learn of me. That will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is what? Stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. He says, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. We want to have rest unto our souls. we got to take his yoke, which is light, and learn how he carries it. Learn 
how he deals with things. Learn of me. If he is the great physician, if he is the one that is the great teacher, then let's sit down and listen to him. Let's sit down and watch him act out what he's trying to get across. That's the significance of the parables. Those parables were meant for the people who could understand the common language. That could understand, like in southeast Kansas, you want to teach? You teach about farming. This is an agricultural area. You teach about cattle. Or when you're inside of Pittsburgh Common and you're looking at the south part of Pittsburgh, you deal with the college. You give illustrations for people that they can be able to relate with, that they can understand. Learn of me. That's the great thing about the Lord is he took the circumstances and he painted a picture using the circumstances to where everyone was part of the picture. Learn of me. If we're going to go through the lessons of life, we've got to realize that in this grand scope, a grand picture that God is painting, that who is the master painter? Jesus is. And what little bit I know about art is that, is that each artist has their own style. Am I right, Gina? Usually, and that's why they can be able to tell if they're fake or not. Because a certain type of brush strokes or, or types of paints or certain little th things inside those paintings that was always put in there as a, 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 as a representation of who the artist was. Things like that, absolutely. And so when he says, learn of me, we learn how Jesus worked with people. And if we're going to have peace, since he is the Prince of Peace, then follow how he worked, and then do exactly what he tells us to do. But then also, he's the great teacher, but then also, look at John chapter 6, John chapter 6. Everything leads to Christ. Everything leads to Christ. John chapter 6, verse 45 says this, It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father, look at this, cometh unto me. It all leads to Christ. Everything. When it comes to salvation, without Jesus, there's no salvation. You want hope? You go to Jesus. You want comfort? You go to Jesus. You need strength? You go to Jesus. Everything leads to Jesus. He is the door whereby that any, any aspect of what we need, you've got to go through the door. You've got to go through the entranceway. And so uh, the lessons of life, they're learned in the school of affliction. They're practiced every day. The teacher, we learn about the great teacher, that everything leads to Christ. Then look at Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verse 20. Look at verse 20, Ephesians chapter 4 through verse 23. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard of him, heard him, and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the former lifestyle, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. If we truly learn it, it purifies us. You haven't learned Christ. How do you do all that? You have, so you had to go back to, you've got to learn Christ. You've got to be willing to put off the old man and put Christ on. It's kind of like a coat. You know, if you're cold, you can have one or two things. You can put on uh, just a shirt but that's not going to take away, away the cold. You've got to put something else on. So sometimes you've got to be able to adjust based upon the circumstances. But if we learn the lessons, it makes us better. It strengthens us. It matures us. It guides us. As we saw this morning, it gives us confidence of knowing that 
because of the situation, I followed the prescription that God gave to me. I became better. Now, I can help other people because I've already gone through this particular lesson. That's the significance of our lives. See, if we really truly understand that how valuable we are, why does God use us compared to any other creature out there so that he personally made us and he has a purpose for that? You know, we get to experience something that the angels will never get to experience. Salvation. They don't understand what it's like to have your sins forgiven. They don't understand about having peace and comfort. They don't understand what it's like to feel the, the presence of an almighty God when, the, when things seem to be really bad. They don't understand all that. And so they can't, they can't relate to us. But you and I can relate to other people that are going through problems, can't we? It's the empathy. It's the hurt of healing the hurt. I was at the bus barn this week and one of the, the families had to put down their family pet. Well, they came in and they were just heartbroken. And I talked to them. I said, are you okay? Well, no. We had to put our family pet. We had 17 years. And I literally started crying. I said, what are you crying about? Because I know the hurt it is by having that animal that you love to put all these memories, done all these different things, and to have it gone. I know what that's like. He said, I've never seen anybody cry. I said, well, trust me, I'll cry a lot about dogs. Because I remember the last dog we had was Watson, and we had the vet come to the house, and they gave him enough medicine that would have put down a horse. That's how, that's how strong-willed that dog was. Although inside, it was dying on the inside, didn't want to give up. And I had him in my arms, and just the fact of, it just broke my heart when he finally gave up and just everything was gone. The, the finality of that. And I told him, I said, I understand what it's like to hold something that you love and, have, and, and invested in. He said, wow. He said, I guess you can understand what I'm going through. Absolutely. So, say, well, it's just a dog, but it's not a dog to people. That's family. That's a brother. That's a sister. That's a, a, a child. That's a, a relative. And people take that seriously. And so you don't want to ever minimize that. That's why when I've been a bus driver and I've had kids, especially on my old bus route, would you please pray for my pet parakeet? What's the best pet parakeet? It's really sick. Mama has taken to the vet. Okay, I'll pray. You have other kids start mocking. You better not mock about that child. That child, it's everything to have that pet parakeet. Why is it important? Because would you want someone to laugh at you when you're going through that type of heartache? No. I mean, you want to talk about my hackles getting up and getting a little excited, I'll get excited. You start attacking me because I'm emotional about my animals. That's the aspect of understanding what it means like to take off the old man and putting on the new man. The aspect of the confidence of knowing that I've gone through that and I just want to let you know. I may not have any other words, but I know I want to let you know that I'm going to walk alongside of you because I know exactly how you feel. And that afternoon, I got a hug from the wife. She says, you know, I just know there's one thing about you. I appreciate it that you're very empathetic towards people. And I appreciate the fact that you love animals. Well, of course, I've got one. It means something. You just don't know how it's going to touch people's lives. And then lastly, let's go back to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. It results in contentment. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned through all these different lessons of life in whatsoever state I am. Now, we're not talking about the state of Kansas or the state of confusion. We're talking about the status of that situation. And what sort of state I am, therewith to be content. And that's just being thankful for what you have. Thankful for being in that situation because it could be a whole lot worse. I've learned that whatever's happened through the lessons of life, through all the hurts, habits, and hang-ups of, of situations, I've learned to say, you know what? It may not be as good as what it could be, but it could be a whole lot worse. And I could be content in knowing that I have Christ, and I am Christ's. And for that, 
There's no amount of money, no amount of emotional support can satisfy what knowing that I am a child of God and that he is with me everywhere I go. And I'm content with that. It's not everything I wanted, but you know I'm thankful that nothing else take away everything. But if I have Christ, I'm a better man because of that. And so these lessons of life are learned in the school of affliction. They are practiced every day. They learn from the great teacher that everything re returns to Christ. And then if we learn the lessons, it purifies us and makes us better. And then the end result of all of this brings us contentment. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content, the Bible says. We have that. Just be thankful for what we have. We serve an amazing God, don't we? Well, let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father, we love you this evening. Help us tonight. Guide and direct our steps. Bless us in a special way, Lord. I pray be with each one of us this week. We do not know what this week holds, but you do. Lord, it's amazing how fast time seems to fly. Lord, it just seems like just we're at the beginning of the year, and we're almost at the end of the year. We've had a lot of lessons to learn, a lot of things to go through. But Lord, through all of it, you've never left us, never forsaken us. You've always been there for us. Thank you for that. Bless each one that leaves as we leave this place. Be with us as we return the next time the doors are open. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Well, Brother Bob, you'll come, we'll take up an offering, and then we'll conclude. And don't forget, next Tuesday, not this week, but next Tuesday, it was in the bulletin, It'll be our Thanksgiving service. We'll have a time of testimony, and then uh, we'll see what the Word of God has for us about thanks, thankfulness as we get ready for... I, I can't believe Thanksgiving is all, all already here. Isn't that amazing? I mean, we are like 11 days away. That is it. It is like, whoa. You can sit right there. It is unbelievable. So...